My name is Mara Stella Fustel, and I'm the Music Special Collections Librarian at the University of North Texas. This video is free and available to anyone who wants to learn more about DAX. In this video, we will be reviewing the 11 principles that form the basis for the rules found in DAX. After watching this video, you will be familiar with the rationale for and content of the principles, understand how they guide DAX rules for archival description, and have a foundation for formulating ideas on how to apply these principles in a variety of situations. Why have a statement of principles? Why not just jump into the descriptive instructions? Archival work recognizes the importance of context, and our own descriptive rules make more sense when we situate them in the context of their rationale and development. The principles help articulate that context, which includes the values and priorities that underlie DAX as a content standard. You can find the principles just under the table of contents for the current online version of DAX, as the second item in the list, shown here on the right side of the slide. Bearing in mind again that context is essential to archival practice, the statement of principles begins with some background information on why we undertake archival description in the first place, and then summarizes some key concepts including user-centeredness, the activity of identifying and describing aggregations of records, and the traditional centrality of provenance and original order in archival description. And that brings us to principle one, which acknowledges the implicit reality of professional best practices. They are not simply mechanical processes, and they are not neutral. Rather, they embody the values and ethics of the fields that establish them. Keeping these values and ethics in front of mind at the outset helps ensure they consistently inform the instructions that follow. In particular, Ethical description prioritizes transparency and equity in practitioners' professional judgment. Principle 2 is a far-reaching principle that states a value and a practical orientation, establishing that the product of archival description is for the benefit of the user. Of all possible decisions that one may take in developing, maintaining, and enhancing a finding aid, priority for finite and often limited resources goes to those which benefit the user. Principle 3 affirms that DAX is appropriate and usable for archival materials of all formats, including but not limited to print materials, multimedia, physical artifacts, and digital files. The fact that one rule can apply to all materials promotes efficient workflows and ensures that all of the materials in a collection can be found, identified, selected, and accessed. Returning to the idea of context, Principle 4 sets out how the interdependence of multiple kinds of information maximizes the usefulness of a finding aid, particularly with respect to articulating the relationships between materials, creators, and contributors, and the human activity that has generated the archival collection at hand. That is to say, description of the materials themselves is one piece of a larger puzzle. Furthermore, Principle 4 outlines answers to the questions of how much and what kind of description is necessary and sufficient in a finding aid, prioritizing information that contributes to a fuller understanding of the collection. Principle 5 states a specific requirement for transparency and description. Knowing where information comes from, what is knowable from the collection, and what secondary sources may supply both sheds light on the content of the collection and also provides the user with avenues for further investigation. Principle 6 identifies another angle for transparency, in this case regarding interventions by the archivist that distinguish the original condition of the collection from subsequent interventions. This information is essential for the context of the collection as the user finds it, and also for one's own present and future colleagues, providing continuity of institutional memory, as well as transparency in actions taken. Principle 7 acknowledges that user-centered description must reach the intended user and convey the needed information, proactively seeking to mitigate physical, technological, linguistic, geographical, and informational barriers for equitable discovery and access. Principle 8 further articulates some conditions for the maximum usability of finding aids, in the context that most users' interactions with finding aids will be via the intermediary of a computer interface. While it's possible to craft a valid DAX finding aid with a paper and pencil, the structured nature of the information and its open availability maximize the ability to reuse and share finding aid information. Principle 9 combines the values of transparency and user-centeredness while also acknowledging the finite resources of time and labor under which most repositories work. Given the competing demands for scarce resources, 
archival values prioritize the fundamental discoverability of many collections over the exhaustive description of a single collection. This basic discoverability serves transparency and accessibility, while also helping repositories fine-tune their own processing priorities based on public interest in a collection. Building off of Principle 2 and Principle 9, Principle 10 further guides the allocation of resources, favoring the maximum availability of all collection materials to users. In light of the possible revisions and enhancements one could undertake in a collection, Principle 10 offers guidance on what one should prioritize. Finally, Principle 11 acknowledges the inherently iterative nature of archival description. Seldom will a finding aid ever be completely done or perfect because the context in which the collection exists is evolving with respect to available information, professional standards, and above all, the needs of users. In this video, we have gone over the rationale for and the contents of DAC's Statement of Principles, demonstrating how they inform the specific rules contained in DAC's and looking at ways in which they can influence day-to-day -day workflows in a repository. Thanks for watching, and please check out the other instructional videos on the SAA YouTube channel.